We're going to start with the video that we use for new employee orientation. It has a number of good points about safety and safety culture. And then after that, I have a, a PowerPoint um, that we'll go through. Okay, uh, for those that are watching this via the video, I'm, you were not able to see that uh, DVD, so um, you can get that through the employee uh, or the HR. It's played in the new employee orientation. So for here, that video obviously covered a lot of areas of that being Doing good practices can help prevent accidents. So the PowerPoint, you know, this, this myth you often hear, some things are just beyond our control. They, they, they just happened. Uh, yes, that does happen, but there are a greater, greater percentage of things that we can be, uh, avoid accidents by doing good practices. You have a great deal of control. By eliminating controlling hazards and providing employees with adequate training, you can make a start in preventing most injuries. And that's what you know, we really try to do. You have to take control of the safety in your workplace. Recognize the hazards that exist and work to control them. The most effective way to control a hazard is to eliminate it, if that's feasible. Control it in such a way that it won't harm people. And those are kinds of things we do. You know, we can't not transfer residents. That's part of their care. So how do we eliminate as much as we can that hazard for muscle pulls or injuries by using the care plan, by using the equipment, by doing two people transfers, by asking for help instead of taking a shortcut to try to do it ourselves. Other ways, PP&E, the personal protection equipment, uh, as they mentioned in the video, very important. Each area has their different kinds of personal protection equipment. And just like this week when we have some kind of infection in part of the building, uh, you know, wearing face masks, wearing gloves, uh, using the, the alcohol uh, to help prevent spreading that to others. Frequency and nature of maintenance should be determined through risk assessment, taking full account of what the manufacturer recommends, the intensity of the use, the operating environment, user knowledge and experience, the risk to health and safety, from any foreseeable failure or malfunction, preventative maintenance as a form of hazards control. And we do a lot of that preventative maintenance. Um, but you know, the, the lifts, if there's, you know, so if, it, if it slipped for some reason, if the battery's weak, you know, then you need to replace that battery or you need to take it out of service and put in a work order so that it can be fixed and repaired before it goes back into use. To some people, the word housekeeping calls into mind cleaning surfaces, removing dust, and organizing clutter. But in the work setting, it is much more. It is crucial to safe workplaces. It can help prevent injuries and improve productivity and morale. So just you know, cleaning up behind yourself in whatever activity you're doing. If you're changing beds, you know, getting that bedding into the, into the dirty laundry. Um, you know, placing that oxygen tubing so it's not in, in the walkway. Uh, same with, you know, electrical cords to the beds. Um, you know, we're trying to keep them under the beds and plugged into a lower outlet so they're not a hazard when the bed goes up and down. 
prevents slips and falls, helps eliminate fire hazards, clear cut or store materials properly, uh, create written rules and think long term without housekeeping. It's more than one thing. It should continue through monitoring, auditing records, maintaining a constant walkthrough inspections and reporting hazards and training employees to help sustain that housekeeping, that safe working environment. Enforce workplace safety rules. Safety regulations are important in any workplace to ensure the safety of all. You know, I tell, I mean, it's to you guys too, I mean, but new employees. A workplace injury can impact you for the rest of your life. So, you know, protect yourself, you protect your coworker, be willing to help, be willing to ask for help. Um, all of that helps in preventing workplace injuries. Know your emergency plan for your area and we have that disaster manual and we have in services on uh, disaster preparedness. Five best practices. It's natural to want to get the job done, finished on schedule, or even ahead of time. But with it, get it done quick attitude, accidents happen. Don't take those shortcuts. Stick to the instructions and work with diligence and awareness of your surroundings. Also, if there are shortcomings in the instructions, don't begin the work until you've clarified all your questions and that they are answered. You must always be comfortable and familiar with the procedures that you're expected to do. So number one, never take shortcuts. Safety and transit. OSHA says workplace driving accidents cost employers billions a year. So if your job includes vehicle operation, you know, make sure you check that out, make sure it's safe and ready to use, especially, you know, when we're transferring or tr transporting residents. Weather. And I try to send out weather alerts as I get them from um, either the weather station or Lynn County. Um, you know, we had a couple of wind events in the last five days. Didn't get as bad as they were forecasting, but um, it can. So inside and outside, we have, you know, our building gets very warm when it gets warm in the summer and, and can be very cold when it's very cold outside. So, you know, I guess in cold, dress in layers, properly cover your head and feet and hands and face. Um, in the heat, wear loose, close, cl loose fitting clothing and take frequent breaks uh, and get plenty of fluids. And we do the same with our, with our residents. PP and E, that personal protection equipment. It's crucial to preventing injury, so make sure you wear it if, you know, if it's part of your work process. Many workers don't realize the negative consequences of poor housekeeping. If an unkept workplace becomes the norm, paper, debris, clutter, spills are acceptable, then more serious health and safety hazards are overlooked and injuries become more probable. Housekeeping goes beyond personal cleanliness. It also includes keeping the workplace orderly, taking care of any slip and trip and fall hazards, uh, removing waste and fire hazards, assess your work environment with a critical eye and pay attention to the layout of the workplace, aisles, markings, adequate sea of storage and maintenance and report dangers and deficiencies right away. Uh, you know, we're getting prepared to move into a new building and there are new, uh, new things involved in there. We have stairs, we have elevators, we have a basement. Uh, what does that mean to our environment and safety of our environment and workplace? If that elevator, um, you know, e either jerks or if the floor's not lining up, you know, that needs to be reported so we can get the service people in here to, to make those repairs or adjustments. Yes? Uh, that's one of the last things I was curious about in terms of keeping the workplace in the elevator. There, there was an occurrence, yes, where, um, you know, a, a 
she got in the elevator and pushed the floor and it just went a little bit and stopped and then the door wouldn't open and it wouldn't go back to the floor, it wouldn't go up to another floor. Uh, that can happen. And that's, there is a phone in each elevator and that calls to um, the rehab nurses station. And it's a, an individual phone on that north wall. And so if that phone rings, it's important for anybody that's in that office to answer that because that's the way that a person in the elevator gets a message out that they're trapped they're in the elevator and need assistance um, yes that you know that can happen but that's and again that's why we're not to use elevators in the event of evacuations fire evacuations because fire is going to burn into the electrical system and short out the panels and we don't want people trapped in an elevator between floors in a fire event. What if it's an individual in the, in the office and the phone just keeps ringing? Well, How they, you, you can continue to call. I mean, you know, yeah. we are a 24 hour staff. There could be, yes, there could be an occasion that there's not anybody there immediately, but you're able to keep calling. And it, And there's, you know, there's nobody working in the basement during the night shift in particular. You know, now nursing or somebody may have to go down after supply or something equipment wise. And that could happen, but that's, that's why the, the phone is there and to keep calling. Other questions? Yeah, what if the phone doesn't work? What, what if the phone doesn't work? Yeah. Well, it's like, like this person did. They just kept banging on the door every once in a while until somebody was in the area and they heard them. Now there is an access door in the top of the elevator if you can. Yeah, but, yeah if you're short. Okay, we can't jump that high. No, that's right. Get on the railing. Hopefully you can hold on. No, just push all the Did buttons. you get the answers to all your questions on your on your quiz? Use your cell phone call 911. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Doing what? <laughs> Is that one yours? That's Joanne's. She's up next. Okay. Thank you. Does she need this? I've been given the great pleasure of being able to cover dental for you. Okay, what are today's objectives? Why is mouth care so important? Common oral diseases, bas basics of mouth care and denture care. Why is mouth care important? Well, poor oral health means more inflammation and infection. The inflammation and infections are linked to cardiac issues, poor diabetes, blood sugar control, pneumonia. Brushing teeth is not grooming, it's a medical necessity. Most common oral diseases, caries or decay, the most common disease worldwide is an infectious disease, transmissible, affects all ages, 50% of people 75 and over have root caries. Periodontal disease, gum disease, the leading cause of tooth loss in adults and the second most common disease worldwide. Dry mouth, over 400 medications cause dry mouth. Providing oral care for another person. A recent study found only about 16% of adults in nursing homes are getting regular oral care, tooth brushing. Providing oral care to another. Level of care depends on the patient. Some patients may just need someone to get all the supplies gathered for them, but make sure they have brushed. Inspect the mouth. Next level is supervised brushing for early dementia. Patient requires prompts at each step for self-care. 
mid-level dementia may be guided brushing with your hands over theirs, and late-stage dementia may not open their mouth or resist care. I think that's the number one reason why we can't do real good oral care. So you get everything ready. Got it down? <laughs> okay, get everything ready. Providing oral care to another preparation. Have everything ready, your toothbrush, your sulca brush, your toothpaste, your two cups, one with water, one for spit, towel and gloves, flashlight or pen light, have patient be sitting up. How many here use a flashlight when they're using when they're doing oral care? Hmm? You don't have flashlights? I can't hundred. Well, you can use any flashlight you want. Have patient. Actually, you know, the facility does have pen lights available, and they're in central supply. Um, have patient be sitting up. Prompt patient for, uh, a prompt patient for self-care is appropriate. Inspect the mouse for lesions and for thoroughness. Oral inspection, what to look for. Use a flashlight, report to nurse, actions required. Sores, red and or white patches, ulcers, all should heal within two to three weeks. If not, they must be evaluated by medical dental professional. Fungal infections are common under dentures, corners of the mouth. Very loose teeth fillings can be a choking hazard and aspiration risk. If patient is self-care, inspect the debris or, pl or plaque. Check uh, cracked, broken, or sharp edges to dentures. Brushing the teeth, supervise brushing. Let the patient do whatever they can first. Have them remove a partial or denture. Guide the brush to their mouth, hand on theirs. Praise and encourage self-care, great job. Prompt to remind them if you skipped a step. Inspect and offer some help to complete care. Know your patient. Do they have power electric toothbrush, traditional brush with soft brush uh, bristles? Brushing the teeth patient, not brushing. Remove any partial or full denture for them. Clear out debris inside the cheeks. Use gloved finger with gauze, toothette, or toothbrush. No paste. Wipe the inside of the cheeks, rinse, and sip water if they can. Then you inspect the mouth for lesions, sores, gross, lumps, abscesses, abscesses or anything unusual using the flashlight. Make, uh, use water or mouthwash to dip brush in. Gently brush with soft bristle, bristles. Gen gentle strokes along the gum line, inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Okay, brushing the teeth is if the patient is not brushing. You want to dip and rinse the brush to remove the debris. Then if they bite down, be patient, wiggle the brush gently, or use two brushes, one to bite down and a smaller brush to brush around the first brush. Allow patient to sip or rinse if they are able. If a patient chokes easily, skip that step. After brushing away debris, apply a pea-sized toothpaste along the gum line. Allow patient to spit, but do not rinse. Okay, brushing your teeth. Use a gentle, soft bristle brush. Do not use paste for initial clearing of the debris. Tilt brush at a 70 or 45 degree angle along the gum line. Sweep and roll away from the gum line. Brush outside, inside, and chewing surfaces and rinse. Then you apply fluoride toothpaste to brush and brush lightly to apply to the teeth. Do not rinse. The sulca brush. How many of these do we have for our resident? Okay. Denture and partial care. Denture and partial care must be removed, uh, dentures must be removed nightly. Out of at least four hours a day, inspect the dentures for cracks, breaks, and sharp edges. Dentures should be brushed daily. 
Ask patient to puff out their cheeks. This will help to break the denture seal. Rock the denture side to side, turn to side, down and out. Partials, place gloved fingernails just under the, the clasps. Gently loosen and pull evenly up and down and out. Have a towel nearby. Dentures are fragile. Check for any sores in the mouth, especially on the roof of the mouth and on gum and the gums. Check wherever dentures touch. That's how some dentists find oral cancer too. They're able to identify it. Brush the gums with extra soft toothbrush. Brush dentures and partials with a denture brush over a washcloth or small towel in the sink. If dropped even a couple of inches, they can break. Don't use bleach to soak your dentures. Soak overnight in plain water or in denture cleaner. No hot water. Never let the dentures with partials dry out. They can deform and crack if left out of water. If a patient puts up a fight due to dementia, keep trying. Then don't put the dentures back in. Any questions? Do I still need to do it? Yes. 